and welcome to Series 3, Episode 7 of In Suspense, a podcast and vodcast for fans and writers of crime fiction. I'm Leslie Cara and my co-host is Lauren North. Oh! <laughs> you froze for a little while there. No, Lauren. I just forgot to say hello. Oh, did you? <laughs> I thought you'd frozen. <laughs> So, yeah, I can't believe that we are coming to the end of Series 3. It seems bizarre, doesn't it, that um, we've, we've, we've done so much already. It's, uh, it's incredible and it's been such fun. Um, uh, we, we've enjoyed every minute of it. And, uh, I mean, obviously we're going to have a short break over summer, but we're already planning the next series. So, uh, yeah, really lots to look forward to. Um, and last... On our last show, we spoke to the incredible um, Joe Spain, and that was a fascinating episode. Really, really enjoyed talking to Joe. I mean, we enjoyed talking to all of our guests, obviously. Yes, yeah. We were talking about creating killer hooks, and Joe had some really insightful things to say about that. And um, we've had lots of downloads of that episode, and people, you know, pe obviously people are really interested in in the, this element of hooks and creating good hooks I think we're all we're all after the perfect hook <laughs> I, we are and Jo was really fascinating with her topics wasn't it and I, I think um it's really nice isn't it to know that we're reaching so many listeners and we've got so much support out there at the moment so yeah we're, we're really grateful to everybody who tunes in um but yeah we're only we're only going for a few weeks aren't we we're back at the start of September aren't we that's correct yes yes that's correct yeah I'm not quite sure what date it will be but it'll be it'll be the beginning of September which is is wonderful isn't it because that's when we first started we did the 3rd of September didn't we last Gosh, year when all the books came year. out at once gosh that's yeah. gone that's gone so quick um well but before we go on to today's topic tell me what you've been up to leslie well um i went to the first with you actually we both went didn't we to the first in real life book event for a long while and that was at waterstones in colchester for the book launch of was it james henry wasn't it mm -hmm. and uh yeah that was really really nice to actually be in a bookshop with people <laughs> Yes. <laughs> oh dear, that was great. And um, yeah, apart from that, I mean, I've had a bit of time off and I've been spending time with family, had all my sons and um, our sons and their um, girlfriends and partners at various times. So that's been lovely catching up with them all and uh, watching football, which probably the less said about <laughs> that, the better. <laughs> But did did really get into that. Um, I always get into the big matches. You know, I'm not really a, a regular football fan, but I, I do love the, uh, you know, the Euros and the World Cup and all that sort of thing. Although it's so stressful watching that, you know, I'm not sure. Especially the penalties. Oh, God, yeah. Yeah, and it was horrible, all the fallout over that, the racist fallout. It was, yeah. it's despicable, really. Yeah, it really puts a big cloud over everything. Oh, just, just horrible. Unnecessary. Absolutely. Um, so yeah, there was the football, there was the tennis and uh, yeah, and also I'm at that part of the year where I'm th dreaming up a new novel and planning and I always think that's my favourite time of year when one book's done. I mean, I've got the proofs back now to check, but that's easy, isn't it, doing the proofs and then um, yeah, thinking and planning the next one, which is, which is always uh, exciting. I, I enjoy it very much. But uh, you've had a, a really tough week, haven't you, Laurie? Yes, I have. Um, yes, very sadly, my dad passed away uh, last week, um, which was, yeah, it's been really tough, been quite up and down. I think I spent the first few days trying to manically plan everything. And you can't because everything takes so much time. Um, and then it sort of hit me after that. So, yes, I have been quite emotional and haven't done any work. <laughs> um, but I think I've um, turned a bit of a corner and like today I finished the eulogy and I'm doing a photo um, sort of video of all of his photos to have at the funeral. And it's been really nice to sort of have more, of, I feel like I'm at that point of celebrating his life a bit more. So he did really have such a wonderful life and, and lived so much longer than anyone expected. So mm. yes, it was sad, but uh, and it is still sad, I should say, but um, yes, I'm okay. Thank you. And um, yeah. everyone's, been really kind and sent flowers and that's been really lovely mm. oh yeah it's been a it's been a difficult week but um yeah hey right so uh what 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 is our topic for today laurie i can't remember oh i know what it is oh. moving <laughs> blank. a complete blank yes <laughs> moving the goalposts <laughs> moving the goalposts right. yes and uh that's that i mean that is a, a topic that we're all sort of um interested in isn't it because it, we're all guilty of it aren't we we're all we're always sort of 
think you know we never seem to be satisfied with reaching one goal i think i don't know if that's a perennial problem with writers you you're always you know you 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 i mean i don't know about you i for ages my goal my main goal was finding an agent and then when i found an agent the next goal is getting a publishing deal and then you get a publishing deal and then you you know you want your book to do well and you know in my case my first book did really well and, and the second and i think that puts an expectation on you doesn't it and you think oh god well i hope my next book does as well because if it doesn't oh you know i'm a failure and you, you don't really sort of get to celebrate those amazing successes when you have them just the sheer fact of getting a book published at all is is a huge achievement and everyone who does that should be incredibly proud of themselves and celebrate it but we're always we've always got our eye on the next thing haven't we yeah um i don't know whether that's inevitable um or whether it's just a <laughs> writers a writerly writerly problem i don't know yeah i i don't think it ha helps that everything happens in publishing in like small little units so there's never i think a time when i found i've wanted to pop the champagne courts because you get the offer it through or, or like you have an offer from an agent, but then you haven't signed the contract yet. And, and that takes a couple of months to get everything sorted. And it's the same with publishing, like you get the offer, but then it's not announced straight away. And, and then it's the same, you put, you finish your book, but then it takes loads of editing and then it, it's done, but then it's not out. And there's all these like little things where it's not quite there. And I think I always seem to miss the boat on when I should be celebrating. And even publication days, you can have an ebook and a paperback and a hardback. And it just, which one are you supposed to celebrate? I think it, it's hard to sort of take those wins sometimes because yes. you're not really sure when you were supposed to, I think. Yes. So, um, and I think a lot of writers and a lot of creative people, we're all quite driven, aren't we? And I think we, we're never really totally satisfied. We always, we've always got our eye on what's coming next, haven't we? Yeah. And um, I mean, I, I, I've got my current goals are to continue writing a book a year because that's what I want to do. Um, I mean, obviously, if that ever becomes too much, I, you know, no one's forcing me to do that. No. But I, I want to do that, you know, and it's kind of expected in a way, isn't it, with commercial fiction, if you want to sort of keep your name current. Yeah. And hold on to readers. Um, so, yeah, writing a book a year, um, getting better, you know, improving, yeah. improving my writing because, you know, we can all of us improve, can't we? And. And when you read, you know, great crime novels by other oh, great novels, not don't have to be crime novels, it, that inspires you, doesn't it, to do better and write better. Um, I mean, what else? Do I want to, yeah, I want to I want to be better at time management as well. That's my oh, my endless goal is, you know, permanent goal really is to get better because I, you know, I nearly burnt out earlier in the year, as you know, and um, I don't want to do that again. It's funny, actually, I was I was looking back through my old emails and I realised that every time, at the same time every year, which is the same part of the book, you know, process mm -hmm. of writing, I send, you know, a desperate email to my agent. And so I, I think they must know, you know, they must schedule my, my, my breakdowns into their time. I'm sure they don't. <laughs> Oh dear. But yeah. Uh, yeah, so, so, you know, all these goals and, I, you know, and I'd, I'd like to write in a different genre one day. So there's all sorts of things um, that I, that I want to do. And, but I have, like you said, I have sort of decided I'm going to celebrate my achievements more when they happen, you know, and it's, it's publication week this week for the dare. So I'm oh, determined to, for, well, pub, for the paperback, you know. <laughs> Um, so I'm determined to enjoy that and celebrate that as much as I can. And... Good, yes. I know I know exactly what you like. This um, two years, no, six years ago, I was offered a two book digital only women's fiction deal. And I, I remember at the time feeling like I just hit the absolute jackpot. Um, I didn't have an agent. But I was still just, I thought, yes, this is it. I've done it. I've achieved it. it's everything I wanted to achieve right here. And then very quickly, it's like, right, well, now I need an agent. And now I want more books. Now I need a bigger publisher and all these things. And, and like my current goal seems to be, I just want to take over the world <laughs> in some sort of authory way. And Laurie, um, you will. You will, Laurie. <laughs> I'm going to. <laughs> um, so we will see. Um, but yeah, I think it's, sometimes I get a bit overwhelmed with my goals and the sort of desperation to achieve actually and it's this passion and it bubbles up and I think sometimes it, it sort of tilters from passion through this little bit to frustration because I think yeah. I'm not where I want to be and in order to get there I have to do this this and I have to wait for someone else to do this and I just have all the stars have to align and 
they have to see what I see and it, it doesn't it doesn't happen overnight so I'm trying to have some patience yeah but then you know having goals is good isn't it I think goals is what keeps us going and it what gives us hope and drives us to achieve more so I don't think it's a bad thing to have lots of goals I think we've just got to maybe have smaller incremental goals rather than always looking at the big picture we've got to think okay so that's where I want to be and how am I going to get there and make those sort of small steps and, yeah. and celebrate each one of those when you achieve them um, rather yeah, than I completely racing agree. to, yeah. Every year at the start of the year like on New Year's Day, I'll write a goal list for the year and then I'll allocate whether what control I've got over it. So if I want to get like a big book deal, what control do I have over that? And actually it's quite frightening sometimes that the things I want to achieve and how little control I have on those things happening. So I do think there's a certain amount of understanding that yes, you know what you've got to do, but you also can't beat yourself up if things haven't been aligned because of other factors. So yeah, it is it is really hard. Yes, I think the only thing we as writers have any control over is our writing, isn't right, it? Right, the best book. Yeah, yeah exactly that. that. Keep, keep on with the writing. And um, oh, I thought of some more goals, um, doing yeah. more on social media and cr developing this podcast. And this yes, podcast. yeah, exactly that. I mean, yes. you know, that's 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 another thing to think about, isn't it? But that's that's a really enjoyable one as well. So <laughs> it is, yeah, my friend asked me, oh, what are your goals for Harrogate this year? And I was like, oh, gosh, did I have goals last time I went? And she goals like, yes. for <laughs> yeah, apparently I had quite a lot of goals last time to like sort of meet new people and mingle and all this stuff and this time I was like oh I just want to go and have a really good time so it's yeah. um oh. funny I do I am a goal orientated person I think after the year we've the, the 18 months 17 months mm. we've had we we do need to let our hair down a little but we've still got yeah. to be really careful haven't we obviously it's, it's horrible time I, I find it hard to talk about because I just think we're all going to be back in lockdown in I know it's very worrying yeah uh, and I, I know that when I see people at Harrogate, I'm going to want to hug them, but we can't. We've got to really be careful. I mean, people are already, they're not socially distancing still. They're not always wearing their masks, even though I know it's not law, but, you know, it's kind of, it's a worry, isn't it? It's, it's really hard, isn't it? And there is, yeah, it's, mm. it's a difficult situation. Yeah, but we will have a great time in mm. Harrogate. Um, absolutely can't wait. In fact, my suitcase is now already half packed. Mine too. <laughs> Because as we record this, it is Tuesday, the 20th of July. Yes. So, yeah, so it's uh, it's not long now. But anyway, we were talking about moving goalposts and the, our guest today is the perfect person to discuss that. And also, we're going to be also talking to her about her writing career, of course. And that is none other than Sandy Jones. Great. <laughs> Welcome Sandy Jones to In Suspense. It's a pleasure to have you here. Thank you so much. I'm looking forward to this. And um, we're delighted to have you on the show. Um, before we dive in, I'm going to read your bio. So um, Sandy Jones ha has been a freelance journalist for over 20 years, interviewing celebrities for Hello, Women's Weekly and the National Daily Newspapers. Amongst her favourite people to talk to are Paul O'Grady, Joanna Lumley, Julie Waters and the late Bruce Forsyth. Her debut novel, The Other Woman, is a psychological thriller about the destructive relationship between a woman and her partner's mother. If Sandy wasn't an author, she'd be an interior designer as she has an unhealthy obsession with cushions. She lives in London with her husband and three children. Now, your latest book, uh, The Guilt Trip, was out last month. Um, now, it's a really pacey and twisty read, and I absolutely raced through it. Um, right. So for those um, watching and listening, could you tell us what The Guilt Trip is about, please? Yes. So it is the story of Jack and Rachel, um, Noah and Paige and Will, who are five friends who think they know everything there is to know about each other. Um, and they're heading off to Portugal for Will's wedding. His bride-to-be, Ali, is... Um, how how best to describe Ali? She's, she's certainly vivacious and she's outgoing. Um, but even before they're on the plane, you know, she's rubbing people up the wrong way. She's, she's one of those ladies that maybe can only take in small doses. Um, and... Um, you know, and, and it, but is it all an innocent misunderstanding or is her behaviour sort of hiding a, a more vindictive streak? Um, by the reception, there's one dead body 
uh, and five guilty consciences who have all got something to hide. Hmm. Fantastic. Oh, it's it's a gripping, really engaging storyline, um, Sandy. I really enjoyed it. Some explosive secrets and revelations and infidelities. Yes. Uh, yeah, great. Great title and a great book. Um, and it's wonderful to read a book that's set in such a luxurious, hot location. Um, and uh, I was wondering whether, you know, where the idea came from and whether you, you, you know, you deliberately set out to make it a, a holiday read, you know, a book that people would be desperate to throw in their suitcase. <laughs> I, th I think I, I probably meant to, or I certainly hoped so, um, if, if we all kind of got the chance to, to go away. But um, now I, I kind of wonder if people might want to read just because, the, you know, they're not going to be able to. Um, I, I, I think because obviously my all, all of my books are, are kind of have been out, I think pretty much every every June, July. Um, but even, even then, so, so I suppose that it's always going to, I'm always going to have a summer theme in mind, yeah. um, knowing that. But I just, I, I couldn't, like all of us, I couldn't possibly have imagined sort of when I was writing it last year or last summer, um, you know, that we'd all still be having to negotiate our summer holidays this year. I mean, mm. it's that just wasn't, Mm. Yeah, I just I didn't even consider that, to be honest. I thought we were going to be well through this. Um, but, you know, as I say, maybe people will pick this up just purely just to escape to somewhere hot, even though they physically can't at the moment. Yes. And what gave you the idea for the book, for the for the plot? How did how did that sort of start? Um, I, I didn't really um, I didn't really sort of I, I, I kind of wanted to write a kind of an out and out destination book um, and obviously Portugal is is somewhere I know and love and it seemed kind of like the perfect location um but I, I'd not I, I think I I'd not written a book with such a, a large cast before um so that was a little daunting and and at first I kind of offered up two couples um to my publisher um in my synopsis um but my publishers were like okay you know love this it's great but how about throwing a another couple of characters in um and and I was like well I, I don't think <laughs> I don't think so I'm well out of my comfort zone um with that because I've never I've never really done it before um but I'm, I'm just very glad that they pushed pushed it because it the, the extra characters gave me a a kind of a, a lot more freedom I suppose and flexibility um to kind of expand the plot um and and I do kind of write Although I try to give my publishers a synopsis, um, I find it very, very difficult to do up front. So a lot of it does kind of happen as I'm writing and as I'm going along. I'm not very good at knowing what on earth's going to happen up front. <laughs> at all. I haven't got a clue, in fact. <laughs> Oh, that's so interesting. I, and I loved all six characters. So, um, yeah, it's interesting that you had four and then went to six. Um, one of the things that I really loved about it was the female friendships um, at a particular age in life. Because um, they were sort of women in their 40s. You know, they'd spent a huge portion of their life raising their children. And that was over now. Their children were at that age where they didn't need them anymore. And you really got um, like a sense of that... Um, all them almost feeling a bit adrift with their lives I felt mm. um it was so realistic and I'm sure it will hit home with so many women and um, did you mean to address that issue as when you sort of set out to write the book or was it something that just evolved with the characters as you wrote it yeah I, I don't think it was something that I uh intentionally set out to write about but um I guess it's it's such a sort of pivotal point in a woman's life isn't it um that once I started focusing on it I really kind of wanted to follow it through um you know I, I have older children and it's it's a very very odd feeling to have your children who who obviously you've dedicated your life to for 20 or 20 odd years go off and do their own thing and um my eldest is 23 my youngest is 14 um who I'm holding on to for dear life um because I know how quickly time goes and I and I and I know how redundant you you feel when they no longer need you so um I'm, I'm guessing that that most women I mean I know that you're obviously not at that stage yet Lauren but I'm guessing most women probably feel that to some degree or another don't you mm. I guess so. I mean, my my children are older. I'm 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 
I, I, I must admit, I, I was quite glad when they all left home. But then, <laughs> but then we had three boys, all of a sort of similar age, and ha having lived for sort of years with three teenage boys, I, it was quite a relief when they all left home. But uh, perhaps I shouldn't admit that. <laughs> So they've all gone now, have they, Leslie? They have, yes. They're in their 30s now. So. Oh. Oh. <laughs> they're well gone now. <laughs> wow. <laughs> and Lauren, I don't suppose you can possibly imagine it, can you? No, although my son is finishing primary school today, so I have got that oh. sense today of, like, one stage ending and another one starting. So, I, yeah, I put the Facebook photos of, like, first day and last day on today. Oh. So such a young man now um, but yeah I, I can sort of see it's in the future mm. are you happy and is he happy about where he's going to and, and yeah we're not... all fine yeah it's it's absolutely fine no stress now good 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 now Sandy you've kind of already answered my next question because I was I was going to say from the opening chapter of the guilt trip there are multiple suspects and uh, and victims and so we were wondering whether you were a planner or a pantser but you kind of just answered that didn't you in the previous question well, and, and and did you know that shock ending um i mean obviously we won't say what that is but did you know did you know the ending is that how you work or does it is it a process of discovery yeah it, it totally is leslie i i i really wish that i was um i was, I was able to plan i i I don't find I don't know about you guys, but I, I find certainly the synopsis for me when um, pitching a new idea to our agents and editors, I find that by far the hardest part of this whole process. I think to write a hundred thousand words it seems to be a doddle for me after that, um, because I just I just my brain just does not think it just doesn't think in those in that way, you know, to 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 sit here and I, I could sit here for a week. Um, and I likely come up with absolutely nothing at all because it just would feel so forced to me. And as soon as I start really focusing and really concentrating and, and forcing myself to, to come up with something and to think of plot lines and twists and, and endings, um, it, it just, nothing happens at all. Um, and I've tried different ways and I know there's kind of various sort of softwares and things that you can kind of, but I'm just, it, it just doesn't work for me, unfortunately. So, I kind of look on to these other authors and awe, of, you know, of their kind of their post-it notes on whiteboards and, um, you know, and I, I just, I, I would love to be like that, but I just, I can only plan as I write and, and much, much to my publisher's dismay, I'm sure, but the, the, the ending that I give them in the beginning um, is, is very unlikely to be <laughs> the ending that I deliver. Um, with my finished manuscript. Well, it works for you though, doesn't it? I was say, it works yeah. for you. <laughs> <laughs> I, yeah, I, I just, I just, I've tried and I can't, I can't seem to do it any other way. So you're right, maybe I should just kind of settle rather than keep trying and keep wishing I was, I was able to process and write in a different way. Maybe I should just, just settle with what I am doing, knowing that it, it will be okay in the end. Sure. I, I think so. Um, well, our topic for today is moving the goalposts. Um, and Leslie and I were talking earlier about how it's very hard to sort of celebrate your successes when they come because there's often the next thing already on your mind. Um, and what our goals were when we first started out, just moved and moved and moved. Um, and we know that from your bio, Sandy, that you started in journalism. So we wondered if you could give us a bit of a background to how you got into writing your novel and sort of how that all came about with your writing journey. Yeah, so um, I was a journalist for sort of over 20 years, um, specifically uh, interviewing and writing celebrity profiles. Um, but writing a book or at least attempting to write one um, was always on, on my bucket list. Um, though it really was something I thought I, I would kind of park up until, you know, I have a spare five years to write it. Uh, that's kind of was in my head. I thought, you know, there's there's so many other things going on and with the children and everything else. It was it was going to be one of those things. That I just thought, you know, when I kind of can retire down to the beach um, and sit there with a, an old typewriter, you know, I had this very magical idea of what writing a book was going to be. So I thought, you know, I'll just when I have a spare five years, I will return to do that. Um, but about four years ago, I was becoming quite disillusioned um, with journalism. Uh, the, the media landscape was you know, was changing quite dramatically. And 
the term celebrity was certainly changing dramatically as well. You know, it's um, when I started, sort of celebrities were, were kind of people who I classed as legends, I guess, you know, with the Bruce Forsyths and the Joanna Lumleys. Um, and now I think much of our sort of celebrity content in magazines and, and newspapers, um, you know, tend to be, I suppose, sort of evictees of a reality TV show yeah, or, stars, yeah. or Instagram influencers or, you know, um, and, and which is absolutely fine, but they can, they all do a very, very good job of, you know, promoting themselves these days. So they don't need journalists, you know, doing sort of print pieces and also, you know, the print print media is, is really struggling as well. So, so I just decided um, sort of about four years ago that I just would maybe just give this idea of writing fiction a go. Um, and I didn't tell anybody at all, um, not even my husband or my children, because wow. I, I, well, I just didn't think, I, I just didn't want that pressure. I didn't tell anyone because, you know, I think as soon as somebody sort of says they're writing a book, you know, everyone's like, oh, well, how's the book going? How, you know, <laughs> I just thought, I, I don't want to give Is myself... Is published yet? When can I read <laughs> yes, it? exactly. Have you sold any? It's like, <laughs> they made it into movies. <laughs> you know, yeah, I mean, it's... Um, yeah, I just didn't want to put myself under that kind of pressure. So um, I just went off um, very quietly and quite secretively, um, actually, um, and, and, and wrote the book. Probably the other woman, um, probably in about four and a half, five months um, was the first draft. And I really just, I got to the end of it and I thought, OK, I'm, I, I can't believe I've done it. I can't believe I'm capable of it. But um, I'm, I've, I have now done it. I've, it's a tick in the box. And... I can kind of move on. Um, but I just, I just thought, okay, well, and it was just a part of me just, okay, well, what, what if, what if I send it off to just, just a few agents, just to see, you know, where, I, what they think, whether I am, you know, I've got half a chance of writing fiction that, you know, somebody other than my mother would read. Um, and yeah, and, and that's what I did. So I kind of got my kind of dream five agents out of the writers and artists yearbook. And um, just think, well, there's no point in kind of blanketing 30 or 40, because if it's absolutely, truly terrible, I didn't want to kind of <laughs> roll all of them out. So I thought I'll do a few at a time, maybe hopefully get some feedback and be able to, you know, if I want to move on with this or if they think there's any potential in it, I can kind of tweak it and change it and, and hopefully deliver to the next few agents um, something that's, you know, more fitting. Um, but pretty much, with the, well, I think, I know I sent it on a Friday morning. I remember it vividly. Um, and I had a, when I came back to my desk after lunch, there was a, already an email um, asking for, for the rest of it. Um, and, and I just thought, oh, hang on. And I kind of Googled, you know, what does it mean when an agent requests the rest of the manuscript? What does it mean? <laughs> Goosebumps, that's what it means. <laughs> yes, exactly. I've got them now, actually. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, and then it just kind of went from there. And then um, obviously I, I met the lovely Tanara, um, and yeah, and it's it, and it just it's just gone from there. But it really wasn't. Uh, I really wasn't intending for it to be um, a book that any that anybody else read at all. I really, you know, I genuinely wasn't. So I am still. I still continue to be blown away that that other people do. To be honest, that's fantastic. And uh, do you think, you know, with your experience in journalism, that that's helped you write fiction? Or what, what, you know, are there any sort of specific journalistic skills that you developed when you were a journalist um, that, that you bring into your writing or that, that help you be a better writer? I, yeah, I mean, interestingly, I, I, I think I held off maybe turning my hand to fiction um, because I primarily, you know, I was primarily a journalist. I think when you're writing profile pieces, there's very little room um, to use your, your own imagination, you know, as, as you have to stick to quotes and you have to report exactly what is said. Um, so I, I, I don't think I, I, I didn't think I would have the imagination needed um, to write a novel. Um, but as soon as I was off the leash, you know, off I went. I mean, I, I love the freedom and you know, the freedom that fiction writing gives me is just, I, I just absolutely adore it. Mm -hmm. um, and I suppose if, if my previous experience helps me in any way, um, I'd say that I'm probably a stickler for deadlines. I think that's 
probably where my journalism comes in a little bit more. Um, I, I don't think I've missed one yet. And I, and when I get work on my desk, I, I like to get it done and, and, you know, and sent back, even if I've got a month to do it. So I think that, that I think there's a, that's a part of the, that's been instilled in me from my journalism days, but I don't necessarily think that I have, I don't think I've really acquired any skills. That I've kind of, you know, obviously I can kind of put a sentence together, um, but I don't think, I don't think, I think the two are very, very different. So I don't know that I've really, any skills have kind of yeah. transferred over actually. I don't know, I don't yeah. know. I, I was expecting you to say about the deadlines because I mean, I, I know, you know, Fiona Barton um, used to be a journalist and she said the same thing, you know, that she's, right. used, to, she's used to coming up with copy under a deadline, under sort of, you know, pressured conditions, she's got to file some copies sort of, so that maybe helps you when, you know, maybe you don't suffer so much from writer's block because you know, you've got to get your word count done and you've got to pre create something. So that's- Yeah, I, I think so. And, and certainly, it, it certainly um, with, with writing the one that I'm writing at the moment, um, which is my fifth one, um, once they, they, they've really shortened my deadline on this one and, um, I was kind of, you know, wafted, I think maybe obviously because of the situation that, that we were in earlier this year as well. And I was kind of wafting around and I wasn't really um, able to, you know, I was really lacking in inspiration and motivation. And um, and I, I dread to think how long that could have gone on for. Um, but uh, I think it was a divine intervention that both my agent and my publishers just kind of sort of pulled, pulled the deadline forward. And said, okay, you know, and essentially, I, I kind of, I think I probably had about three and a half months um, to, to deliver the first draft. And, and as soon as they did that, um, as I say, which, which was a blessing in disguise, as soon as they did that, I, I was just off. And, and I, I needed that. I really definitely needed that. I'm obviously somebody that doesn't, you know, you can't leave me to waft for too long because <laughs> very little gets done. I do, I do need to, um, yeah, I do need to have an end goal. Yeah. And, and as Laurie said earlier, our topic today um, um, is, uh, you know, the moving goalposts. And um, we were just wondering whether you feel that too, you know, do you feel with each book that you write that you you have fresh goals and, and you, you, it, do you do you feel driven to sort of do better, th bigger and better each time? Are you, are you ever satisfied with what you've achieved? Or is it a perennial writer's problem to constantly be striving for the next thing? I think I think it is, isn't it? I think I think we all we all suffer with that. I think, yes, I definitely expect each book to be better than the last. Um, not in terms of, of it being, you know, a surefire commercial success or anything, but I just, I, I think that a lot of that depends on luck actually. But I think certainly in what I deliver to my agent and editors, I feel under increasing pressure to deliver a really strong manuscript for, you know, the first time, you know, out of the bat. I just, rather than it go back and forth, numerous edit for numerous edits, I just, I, I do like to um, deliver something that I truly believe is my best work and that it can, you know, I fully expect that it could go out there. You know, it, could, it never obviously does. It, it never, ever does. But I do like to deliver something that I really think would, is strong enough to kind of just go straight out. Yeah. Um, I think this, that's just a personal thing to me. Um, as I say, it never, ever does. Um, but I, I like to think that I'm, I'm learning as I go and um, I'm getting better at the process. But I, I guess going back to what you were saying about the, the moving of the goalposts, I think I think authors are just notoriously hard on themselves, aren't we? I think we're we're either trying to sort of emulate, you know, our early earlier success, or we're looking to the future, dreaming of what that might be. Um, so you know, sadly, we're never really in the present. I don't think, are we? Um, you know, but 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 also, you know, we've got to bear in mind that this this moment here will be very will very quickly become the past that we want to relive so yes you know it, it's it is yeah we I do think we do we do give ourselves a bit of a hard time but I do also think that there isn't really I was thinking about this the other day actually that there aren't many other professions that um that are critiqued quite as harshly as as we are I think you know as soon as a book is is out anywhere um you know people obviously very free, freely and able to to comment on it and um and I, I just think that's I think 
you know, that that's all, also part and parcel of it because you could just never, you know, you get like, like hopefully like all of us, I kind of, you know, we get our five stars, but it's the one stars that I, I look at and, and it's the one stars that affect me. And, I, you know, I kind of think, oh, why am I bothering? Why? And I just, I just think that's part and parcel of what we do. But I do, I do think that we're sometimes not given um, just, just, you know, it, it's, it's just a profession that is really harshly reviewed quite literally um at every turn so i and i really i can't i don't know can you think of another career or profession that you know every piece of work that you do and deliver is is kind of marked and given a score and a rating i can't think of one no, no, no you wouldn't would you really quite mean really <laughs> I suppose acting, maybe acting, but then not, you don't. Yeah, you get a bit of sort of after a, a drama, you'll get the Twitter sort of storm if something's good or bad. But you don't. But there's no place to sort of leave reviews, is there no. necessarily? No. Yeah. That kind of comes and goes, doesn't it? The kind of the Twitter flow. But I just, yeah. I mean, it, you know, we are we are a product of our reviews, unfortunately. And I, yeah, I just good I think part. that's yeah. I think that's quite tough. Um, and you mentioned um, a few moments ago about um, how we often look at our early success and your debut, The Other Woman, which is an utterly gripping read and one one of the few books I have read just in, in a day, just couldn't stop reading it. Um, and it has had phenomenal success um, and it was chosen for the Reese Witherspoon Book Club. So can you tell us how that felt? And also, um, how did you cope with that success? Did it change your writing? Um... I think, yeah, I think going back to, to what I was saying earlier, I, I really genuinely didn't go into this um, thinking or believing that, that anybody would be reading um, my, my book. So um, I, I, I vividly remember, and I'm so thankful for the memory because I was with Tanara, um, our lovely agent, um, in a hotel in London, um, just purely by fluke. We were just having a catch up and a meeting and um, we'd had a lovely kind of afternoon tea and it was wonderful. And we were just sort of saying goodbye, went to the ladies' bathroom um, and she came out or she was at the, the, the basins when I came out and she said, have you, have you read your emails? And I went, not in the toilet. No, Tana, I was going to kind of just, <laughs> I got on the train maybe. I just, um, but she said, you need to read your emails. Um, and we just, I just remember just both standing at the basins, just reading and I just, I, I honestly could not, you know, she's a, she's a huge um, hero of mine in all sorts of ways. Um, I'd, I'd watched Big Little Lies pretty much all the way through writing The Other Woman. Um, and I just, just, you know, admired her so much. So it, it was just... I, I, yeah I don't think there are there's still not any words to be honest and I just to, to have her read it was ridiculous to have her uh, select it for for her book club pick was just it's, it's insane completely insane um but in terms of uh yes I, I guess I suppose it must have affected me um thereafter I think um as what we were saying earlier you know we're, we're probably always if we have the early success we're always trying to I think emulate it um and then if we're not so lucky with that we're always trying to chase what's going to be in the future and what our dreams are in the future so um I think I yes I think it put probably a lot of pressure on book two um which was an absolute car crash from from the first draft it was absolutely shocking um and and I, d I don't know what that is. I don't know if that's just a book, you know, obviously we all talk about this whole book two thing. Um, and, but I don't know whether it, it was just worse or added pressure because of, of the Reese um, pick. I, 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 would Im I would imagine it probably was, but that was a complete rewrite. So um, I delivered again, what I thought was brilliant. Um, and then we had all had a meeting and they were just like, this just isn't right at all. And it's, yeah, I mean, that those moments are quite crushing, aren't they? Because you're kind of riding on this lovely little wave and then yeah, <laughs> it's yeah, just it's on the coast. <laughs> <laughs> so that was, yeah, that book two was really, really tough for, for all sorts of reasons. And I think probably with hindsight, the pressure um, and the success of, of the other woman probably added to that, I'd say. 
Very much so. Now, Sandy, we're always interested in how our guests manage their time and you still do journalist and journalism, don't you? So we were wondering how you divide your time between your novel writing and your journalistic writing. You know, what does a typical sort of writing week look like for you? Um, I am I'm actually doing very little at the moment, Leslie. I, I, I wanted and intended to carry on um, as I was. Um, and I honestly believe that I could, because um, you know, you think one book a year, <laughs> of course, piece of cake. Um, what am I going to do with all those other months? Um, but it doesn't, it doesn't work like that, does it? So um, I do do bits and pieces. I kind of dip in and out, um, and and I kind of tend to take things that, going back to what we were saying earlier, maybe people that um, interest me um, and influence me and inspire me. I'm, I am. You know, always up for for interviewing and and writing about them, um, but I I have certainly become a little bit more um, rightly or wrongly selective. I think, um, and and that's also because of of, of the time, um, you know, time management and and trying to fit everything in. But the, but my but my books, my a normal week would be um, writing fiction, um, and then probably one day out of maybe. I don't know, every two weeks, um, I would dedicate to doing something else. Um, but also, you know, as you, as you ladies know, they're also sort of journalistic pieces that we, we need to write um, around our books and around our careers and, and things like that. So, um, you know, I, I do enjoy, I do very much and still enjoy it. And I like keeping my hand in, but I wouldn't say that it's, it's a big part of my working week at the moment. Interesting. Yeah. Yeah. There's always those articles, aren't there? Five, t five things you want your readers to know about you. And you yeah, know, oh, gosh, yeah. I better make them a different five things than the article <laughs> I wrote last year. <laughs> it's, it's quite difficult, isn't it? And I'm, I'm terrible. Even, even this, I just, I find this very, very um, difficult because I just, I'm so used to uh, asking the questions and um, right. <laughs> I, I just, I find this very, very, uh, difficult and just to just to kind of, I just want to kind of keep asking you things I know I can <laughs> tell you want to <laughs> I'm just keep having to know you. Um, and you, you mentioned that you're currently writing your next one um so what can we expect from future Sandy Jones books is it going to be another um holiday setting can you tell us can you give us any little treats of what's to come Yes, so the book I'm currently writing is a lot more um, kind of crime mystery than my others. Um, my others have definitely been kind of domestic dramas, stroke thrillers, um, and um, but this one is is kind of a who done it um, that the kind of reader unravels at the same time as our protagonist. Um, and Naomi is a uh, psychologist whose patient goes missing, and all the fingers are pointing at her um, and she is, you know, she, she's left to find out what happened to him and, and to clear her own name. Um, but uh, even though she knows she's telling the truth, the evidence proves that she's lying. So it's, it's, I'm really enjoying it. It's definitely different for me, for me. It's, it's, um, you know, a, kind of a few people kind of on reviews and, and things like that have kind of sort of said, you know, well, I thought this was going to be more of a mystery or more of a, a thriller aspect. And and I don't think, I've, I, I, although they're kind of been pitched as psychological thrillers, as I say, I think they're my previous books have definitely been on sort of more domestic mm. drama, um, you know, you know, talking about relation, exploring relationships between and the dynamics between people and families and and that kind of thing. So this one, this one is a little bit different, but I'm really, really enjoying it. Yeah, oh, it sounds brilliant. And, and we always love to know um, what kinds of books our authors um, are reading. So what um, what sort of genres do you like to read in? And are you reading anything good at the moment? Oh, I really wish I had a better answer for this one, but it's it's really always psychological thrillers. They're they're my go-to. They're good books. <laughs> they, they really are. Uh, they really are, but they they're just my go-to every time. And you know, I and I have tried a few other things and a few other genres, but I'm, I just keep coming back to to psychological thrillers. But but however, um, I have 
just last week on, on the way here, I picked up a book um, outside of my comfort zone and um, that I'm just about to finish. And I have loved every single second of it. It's The Idea of You by... I... Oh, it's Robin. by... Oh, hang on. I've got it here. Hang on. Oh, t- help me out, Leslie. Um, Robin. I've got it here. It's by Robin Lee. Oh, well oh. Done. Rob- oh. Robin Lee. Wow. Have you read it yet, Leslie? Is that one of the Richard and Judy book club picks? Yes. yes, I think it is. Yes, I did. Oh. I am listening to it now and I listen to it with my headphones on so no one else hears. <laughs> Oh my goodness! Oh, I need to read this. <laughs> oh, really good. I wasn't sure. It's not. It's not my kind of thing normally, but my friend recommended it, and it. Yeah, it's really, really good. So it's it's based on um, uh, the boy band One Direction, isn't it? And it's about um, sort of a Harry Styles character, sort of sweeping a slightly older lady off her feet. Ooh. <laughs> <laughs> I'm hooked already. <laughs> It is quite a read. Um, yes, it's a, it's a, I suppose it's a love story with a twist, isn't it? But I, but it's the kind of twist, you know, not that, not our kind of twist. Um, I just, I just actually, I just really enjoyed not having to work out and second guess, you know, the unexpected. I just really enjoyed just kind of going along with the flow of the relationship um, and, and just not having to wonder or worry about what what the the big reveal or the twist was going to be so i yeah i really surprised myself with it but i do i i think it might be an exception but i'm going to stick with it i'm going so what would we call that would we is that is that women's fiction yeah women's fiction slash romance right okay well it's on my tbr pile now I loved it and I am definitely yes Leslie you you need to read it it's and I think that the headphones is probably a good shout (laughs) (laughs) what what about you Leslie what are you reading at the moment um well I've just finished a great book called The Guilt Trip set in lovely sunny (laughs) Portugal which is where you are right now I believe isn't it yes yes lucky enough to get out here yeah and I've also I'm also reading a book that I bought last year by Deborah Mogach called the um I never know how to pronounce is it Mogach I'm not quite sure um called The Carer which is about um a family a sister and a brother and their uh, it's not it's not a crime novel it's a literary fiction gentle sort of comedy um about an elderly man and his new carer and the impact that she has on the family and it's quite it's quite uh, there are lots of issues in it that are sort of reminiscent of what I'm going through at the moment yeah, yeah, I can imagine. but I've also been catching up on not 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 fiction but my my son bought me a private eye subscription for my birthday oh, so lovely. I've been I've been reading those and enjoying enjoying some of the articles in in there <laughs> but are you, so are you guys like like me and you do tend to kind of go is it, is it is psychological thrillers or thrillers generally your your go-to generally normally okay. Yeah, I mean, we get sent so many, don't we? Obviously, through the post. Because, um, I have to beg for mine. <laughs> <laughs> I don't actually get as many as other people do either. <laughs> oh, <laughs> but um, in fact, that's another one I'm going to read soon. I have, I need to, I might take this away to Harrogate with me. A slow fire, but actually, no, I won't oh, take books to Harrogate I've because I've heard I'll be, that's good. I've heard. That's I'm, I'm looking forward good. to reading that by Paula Hawkins. Paula Hawkins yeah. yeah. Um, lovely proof, isn't it? Mm. Um. What about you, Laurie? What are you reading at the moment? Um, well, I just finished reading When I Was Ten by Fiona Cummings, which I loved, which I really enjoyed. I haven't got, I've, I've on, on my Kindle, there we are, there it is, gorgeous cover. Great. Um, and then the book that I'm just started and really enjoying um, is The Murder Box by Olivia Kin, and is it? And I, yeah. I would like to hold it up, but I left it up by my bed because I've been reading I've it a bit of time. So. Leslie's got a copy. Uh, oh, no. Um, Oh. which is, oh, it's, it's is. a um, police procedural book and I don't always find the police procedural books as yeah. engaging as yeah. the psychological thrillers but this one I just can't wait to get back to it I'm really loving it she's brilliant Olivia yeah. Kinn and, and she's lovely as well yeah. right I've not I've not read any of her so she's another one on my list then great <laughs> now oh is it my turn now Laurie yes, it is, is it turn. oh it's it's the fun question. The fun part. Yay. Um, now, your book, The Guilt Trip, is set in a luxury holiday destination and um, a wedding celebration as well. So we were wondering, um, Sandy, what is the most embarrassing thing that has ever happened to you when you're either on holiday 
or at a wedding? There are actually too many to, to list, I would say, uh, on this particular one. I, uh, oh gosh, well, I have, well, I have picked up somebody else's suitcase off the carousel and got it all the way back to my hotel oh. and realised it just looked like my suitcase. <laughs> um, I, uh, I remember posing, having expected a beautiful photo in the shallows with my back to a lovely calm Caribbean sea and, and just a wave coming out of nowhere <laughs> oh, no. and taking, literally stripping. And I don't know how it happens, but I literally, my bikini was completely gone by the time I came up for air. I don't know how how that occurs, but it, yeah, I, it, I, I think but it, the, the, the thing that me and my friends still talk about, which was happened when we were very, very young on a girl's holiday into Magaluf. Um, and obviously we all met boys. This, this is obviously back in the t days of pre-phones and internet and being able to find anyone anywhere. Um, but we'd obviously met all the loves of our lives, obviously, we thought. Mm -hmm. And it was our last night and it was a big deal and we'd, you know, got all the outfits ready to go. And But we kind of got into this kind of situation, what I think most young people did, where you kind of go to bed at seven o'clock in the evening um, and then you kind of wake up at sort of 11 um, and then go out partying for the night. Um, that was the routine we were in for the week. And on our last night, I was unfortunately in charge of the alarm clock. <gasps> and, um, I, and obviously we had these lovely men, boys, uh, waiting for us in our, you know, and, and I just, I just hit snooze again and again. And, again. <laughs> and, and my friends to this day, they, and we're oh, talking you. many years ago, but they, they, we still, they still berate me for it because it, obviously they were the love of our lives and we've missed out on this opportunity. <laughs> oh, that's hilarious. <laughs> oh, I love that. I love that. So no, we just slept straight through. Oh, well, I slept straight through and they were none the wiser. So, um, oh. yeah, that, that was a shocker. How about you guys? What about you, Laurie? Um, so I've got a wedding and holiday one all in one. So we, uh, my husband and I flew to Ireland for our wedding. We got married in Ireland. Um, and at the airport, the suitcase that I packed was way too heavy. I mean, because I literally had every piece of makeup and utensil that I could possibly do. I was just doing my own hair and makeup because we had a really small wedding. Um, so it was too, too, too weighty. And so, um, but we, we had, Andy had his golf clubs with him and that's, you can have that as any weight. So we were there, um, refusing to pay the extra money and he started just getting stuff out of his suitcase um, and shoving it in his golf bag and then his pants were flying all over. it's his embarrassing story not mine isn't it his <laughs> pants flew all the way across the concourse I was cracking up but um yeah so that was quite oh, a funny dear. experience for me but yeah it wasn't really my embarrassing story actually <laughs> what about you Leslie oh there are uh, as usual there are too many to mention um they often involve have probably having too much to drink when I was younger and yes. growing up in strange places um but I I've got to tell the story this didn't happen to me but it happened to one of my close friends and it's so funny I thought I'd tell it she was on holiday with her husband uh, in this really nice hotel and the the doors to the hotel bedrooms were kind of outside they were on a sort of uh, veranda sort of thing so when you came out of your hotel bedroom you were kind of on view to the the, the complex and it was in the night and she said it was very hot and she'd gone to the, both gone to bed. She, she doesn't wear a nightie or anything, so she was naked. And then she got up in the night to go to the toilet mm. and she opened the wrong door thinking it was the bathroom door because she was sort of trying not to put the light on so as not to wake her husband. So she opened the door um, and the door was one of those ones that just shut automatically. And then she realised she was outside and the door <laughs> had shut behind her and she couldn't get back in she was completely naked and she said um you know she was banging on the door and her husband wouldn't wake up because he'd had a bit too much to drink so she was banging on the door for ages and ages and eventually she managed to wake him and you know luckily nobody did see her but she said it was so embarrassing and the thought of what she might happen nobody saw her that yeah. is the sort of thing that would probably happen to me as well <laughs> <laughs> that's so funny that's oh, really dear. funny all right, well, we're on to our quick fire round now. So I'm going to throw questions at you. You're not allowed to ask any back. You just have to answer them. Okay. So are you ready, Sandy? Yes. All right. Ebook or paperback? Paperback. Tea or coffee? 
Tea in the morning, coffee in the afternoon. Sweet or savoury? Sweet. Do you write at your desk, sofa or on the bed? A combination of all three. <laughs> beach holiday or city break? Oh, beach holiday. Wine or cocktails? Cocktails. Cat or dog? Dog. Word or scrivener? Word, definitely. Dinner for two or a noisy night out? Depends what mood I'm in if, I'm, if I like him. Um, probably dinner for two with my husband, I suppose. Yeah, probably. Got to say that, have you? <laughs> Um, and do you prefer writing books or writing articles? Books. That was quick. That was it. Well done. You did very well. <laughs> Fantastic. Well done. Well, I'm afraid that's all we've got time for now, Sandy. It's been such a pleasure having mm. you on today, telling us all about your amazing career. And we've, we've really enjoyed speaking to you. Yes, we have. Thank and you so much for having me, ladies. And, uh, you know, in terms of moving the goalposts, you know, it seems that we've all, we're all very similar in that respect, aren't we? So, uh, yeah, we've, but we, must, we must all remember, all of us, to take stock and, and celebrate our achievements because that's really, really important, isn't it? Yeah, that's so right. Um, and writing books is not a whimsical thing we do, like, when we feel like it. It's, it takes so much grit and passion and it just, it means the world to us, doesn't it? So I think balance is important, isn't it, with our goals and um, celebrations, definitely. Um, now, we're back with season four um, at the start of September and our first guest is the amazing Shari Le Penna. Um, and if we if you do have any topics or any questions for Shari or any topics you think you'd like us to cover, do please get in touch either on Twitter. You can message us privately or just put a comment on or comment on our YouTube channel as well. Um, and that's it now, isn't it? So yes, just that's up. right. So that's that's, uh, you know, now we'll end series three by saying thank you for listening and watching. In, in suspense. suspense. <laughs> I think we're getting a bit better at this. <laughs> <laughs> oh, thanks very much, Sandy. We loved having you on. Thank you, guys. Thank you. Thank you. Great to chat to you. Yeah, enjoy care. the rest of your holiday. Thank Bye. You. Bye. Bye. Bye.